this video, we're going to derive essentially our final chain rule. Uh, and I'll derive it using an example so that we understand exactly what's going on. So in general, we're going to have G from RK into RM. And we'll have some function F from RN into RK. And both of these are differentiable. And we have that G composed with F is a function from now Rn into Rm. And we want to know what's the Jacobian, right? So we've got, uh, this should be Rn into Rm. What's the Jacobian of G composed with F? Well, you might guess it already, but ultimately it's going to be equal to the Jacobian of G times the Jacobian of F. So it's just a matrix multiplication of Jacobians. It's really pretty. So we're going to first examine a simple case where essentially N here will be 1, right? So let's use the Q from last time. We have Q of P1, remember P2, Y is equal to 6, P1, negative 2, P2 to 3 halves, Y, 4, P1, P2, inverse Y squared. We have that friendly fellow. And now we're going to assume that P1 of T is equal to square root of 12T. P2 of T is equal to t square and p3 of t or not p3 ha y of t is equal to t minus 1 that's great so when we compose this we've got that q of p1 of t p2 of t y of t would essentially take something from r1 something called t which is the time right so my price is changing with time and my income is changing with time. And it takes it to something in R2, right? As two components that eventually it spits out. And I want to know, well, this is now a space curve. And so I can take a single derivative with respect to time. So I want the rate of change of my production vector. That's how I say this. I want to know what this is. And what did we do last time? Well, we just looked at, well, what's the derivative of each of the components and then put those together in a vector. That's it, right? So we compute the components and then we put them together. And so remember this was going to then be equal to dq1 dt, right? So this is a scalar quantity, dq2 dt. But then we can use the chain rule on each of these little guys, right? Our, our normal chain rule. So this is going to be uh, d q1, d p1. And the chain rule says that I have to multiply by d p1 dt plus d q1 d p2. So this is just the chain rule for uh, some, something from R1 into R1, right? dP2 over dt plus dQ1 dy dy dt, right? That's my first component. What's my second component? Same, same game. I'm just applying the chain rule that I already know, right? The, the chain rule that I've already derived. dq2, dp2, dp2, dt, lots of derivatives, dq2, dy, dy, dt. But if we look at this, what are each of these components? Well, it's a, this would be the first row, the Jacobian of q, right? The first row 
times the vector, the change vector, or the uh, the the rate of change of the uh, price and income vector, right? So if we write this out, we'll now expand it out, and we have dQ1, dP1, dQ1, dP2, dQ1, dy, my Jacobian, dQ2, dP2, dQ2, dP2, dQ2, dy, and then I've got my rate of change of the prices, dP1, dt, dP2, dt, d p or yeah dy dt is the final component here that's great that gives me a nice expression and uh, if I knew the Jacobian here and also the velocity vector here I can evaluate this right and we've cooked it so that at t is equal to 3 we have that p1 p2 y now functions of t will evaluate to be 6 9 2 from the last time and so that dq dt as we've cooked it at 3 is going to be equal to well we write down the Jacobian that we calculated last time it's going to be negative 3 3 halves 9 halves 16 ninths negative 32 27 32 thirds and if you evaluate this vector right you I mean, do your do your differentiation and compute this. You'll get one six one, right? And so you get a vector. You get a two-dimensional vector. That's the rate of change of the production over time. Uh, the production of these two goods. That's great. So now let's go from R two to R two. So now we're going to assume that. P one of T R. Right, and what what was this? Well, this was uh, the Jacobian of Q, and this was essentially the Jacobian of uh, of my R1 to Rn function. So I'm going to have P uh, TR is going to be square root of 12 TR. So now I'm going to include some interest rate R that I can vary. P2 of TR is equal to RT squared and y of tr is equal to rt minus 1. Right, and so at r is equal to 1, t is equal to 3, I recover my old point, you can compute that, and I can evaluate all this expression, all these expressions. But now I want to figure out what the Jacobian of this thing is, right? Well, I can now take d, q, dt. So now it's the partial derivative, right? Well, I know if I take the partial derivative, it's essentially uh, just like d, q, dt, right? Only now, instead of wherever there was a dt, I have to write uh, a partial derivative. And so this is, of course, I'm just going to recover essentially this formula that I wrote here. Only now I'm going to replace the d, dt's with partials with respect to t. And so, of course, this is going to be dq1, dp1, dq1, dp2, dq1, dy, dq2, dp1, dq2, dp2, dq2, dy. And, of course, I just, like I said, I'm just going to replace these with partials. Simplest thing ever. dy, dt. And the same thing when I differentiate with respect to r. dq, dr is equal to now dq1, dr. Oh, no, no, no. This this is stay, it stays the same, right? It's the Jacobian. The, I only change the, the, the derivative of this guy, right? So dq, uh, dp, Two, dq, one, dy, 
DQ2, DP1, DQ2, DP2, DQ2, DY. And now I have my the change of my economy vector, the rate of change of my economy as I vary the interest rate, DP2, DR, and DY, DR. Well, I know that my Jacobian of Q now, my Jacobian of this function uh, Q of T comma R. Well, it's a. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna just put things into uh, rows, right? So if I if I multiply this, I'm gonna get a, a column vector, right? So my column over here is gonna be DQ over dt and this will be dq over dr right uh, and so these these are column vectors right since q is a, a, a column vector and when I write this right I see that I j can just put these two guys into uh, the rows of or the columns of a new vector that I'm multiplying by so here I have dq1 dp1 dq2, dp2, dq, no, it's still 1, dq1, dy. So here I just have the Jacobian, right? I'm just multiplying each of these column vectors by the Jacobian, so I keep my Jacobian. And what does my Jacobian look like? Uh, or what does this thing look like? Well, it looks like just the Jacobian of my economy vector, right? So, or my economy function. So I have dp1 dt, dp1 dr, I have dp2 dt, dp2 dr, and I have dy dt, dy dr. Which, if you look at it, is exactly the formula, right? So now this is this is exactly the formula that we stated before. It's the Jacobian of the outer function evaluated at the inner function times the Jacobian of the inner function. And that is the final chain rule.